So when I first started learning figure drawing, it was very clear to me from the beginning that there's just so much to learn and it can be very overwhelming. But before we get into that, something that I learned the hard way was the importance of form and perspective. We really need to know how to draw simple boxes and cylinders in perspective. And then if we can do that and master that very well, drawing the figure can be very easy. I jumped straight into the figure and learning the anatomy without mastering uh, form and perspective. And it was very apparent for me that I lack that fundamental. So if you're struggling with the figure, maybe you need to polish up a little bit on your form and perspective fundamental before you can get better at figure drawing. So let's just start with gesture. So the point of gesture is to capture the essence and the feel of the pose. Accuracy here is not very important. It's good to keep in mind the proportions and try and keep the proportions in mind, but you don't need to be very accurate in the way you draw things. Just the drawings are supposed to be quick. We can, you know, set a time limit for us, for ourselves. It can be one or two minutes for each one that we do. And we try to simplify the body with just a few lines. So the way I like to do it here is that I like to add a little bit of form into my gesture, just to give that feeling that there is more than just simple lines and make the figure look more like a 3D shape rather than just simple lines. So what we can do here is to simplify the main forms here into simple shapes. For example, a sphere is a simple thing that we can do to resemble the rib cage and the pelvis. The idea here is just to put it in there for the gesture only and it doesn't need, as I mentioned, it doesn't need to be accurate. A common mistake that I used to do a lot and I think it's important to say is that we shouldn't think about the contour of the body when we're doing the gesture. This is a common mistake that can really make your drawing look stiff if you're thinking about the contour in your gesture. Just keep, keep it loose and we don't really need to think about the contour at all. Two important tips that I always keep in mind and I think we should always do is to exaggerate the pose a little bit. Mind usually likes to make things stable and would naturally draw things very stiff. So if we are consciously trying to make things a little bit exaggerated, our drawing, our figure, our pose will look a little bit more dynamic. And another important tip that have helped me a lot is we can add some wrapping lines to show the form and the direction of the forms. When we're doing gesture, keep in mind the flow of the body, of the flow of the pose. So you can really simplify it with simple lines to make sure the flow of the gesture is there. Now, if we have our gesture figured out a bit, we can move into construction. The construction drawing can also be very simple and you can also include it as part of your gesture. But if you feel more comfortable, you can expand on it. The idea here is that we can have the gesture similar to what we looked at before, and then we can solidify the forms and add the structure of the body. So if you are experienced, you can draw the rib cage and the pelvis in the shapes that represents how they actually look like. But what we can do to simplify it, and that's something that I really like to do, is to simplify it in boxes. And I know that the box doesn't represent the shapes of the rib cage and the pelvis very accurately, but because we're going to add the muscles on top of it afterwards, the boxes really work and it can be as simple as that. And the reason I like the box method a lot, because boxes have very clear planes, like the side plane, the front plane, the top plane, the bottom plane. So it's very easy to draw it in the right direction. Something to keep in mind is that the rib cage is a box that is facing slightly up and the pelvis is a box that is facing slightly down. And because we use this box method, it's very easy for us to know how to tilt the pelvis and the rib cage. And then the arms and the legs can be as simple as cylinders. Something that we should always look at is the direction the arms and the legs are moving towards. So if they're moving towards us, then the wrapping lines will indicate that the leg is moving towards us. If it's moving away from us, the wrapping lines could show that direction also. So once we get this done and we practice construction drawing, we can really have the figure mostly done. You can really draw the figure in the best way possible using these construction methods. And you really don't need to know too much about anatomy. Now, once you start getting more comfortable with these construction, you can slowly start adding the muscles. And if you have your construction drawing done very well, adding these muscles becomes very easy. 
I know there's a lot to learn when it comes to the actual muscles and muscles, you know, expand and, and flex and contract in very different ways depending on the pose. But if you have your construction done well, you can slowly start learning the anatomy and the, of the muscles and add them slowly, slowly into the body. You can start by learning one section at a time. Start by learning the torso first, then the arm, then the legs. And knowing these different muscles, you can start slowly adding to them. But because we've practiced construction so much and we're comfortable with just form and perspective, adding the muscles, even if we don't know it very well, from a reference can be easy. We can just look at the form, how does it look like and which way is it going? And we can just add those into the construction that we already have. I hope this video was helpful for you and see you in the next one.